Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Those big, uh, big derby preps last weekend were certainly interesting, and I think we've got a new little uh, segment for the show that we haven't done before. Okay, yeah. Hey, I don't. I, I guess we haven't done it before, but but it, it, it's important. So let's do it, Matt. We're we're talking bubble horses, uh, horses that uh, may get in or may get left out. And I think there's some good bubble horses this year, Matt, that I would like better than horses that are in the top twenty right now. If they did get in, uh, who's our cover boy for tonight? There, oh, there he is, Arctic Arrogance. You know, Matt, I, I I don't think Arctic Arrogance would be a horse that I would bet in the Kentucky Derby. But if he did get in, we're going to see his placing right now soon. I think he would at least bring some speed to the table because he's a pretty consistent, good New York bred. Yes, yeah, certainly is. And, you know, it is absolutely worth looking at these bubble horses. Uh, I saw a tweet uh, the other day from Horse Racing Nation that said, last year, Brian, if you went from the, the same date to the Kentucky Derby, seven horses were defections in that period of time. In, in, I guess including certainly the one that got uh, Rich Strike into the race. So uh, seven horses defect again this time. We're talking about a lot of these derby horses are going to be in the field. Probably so, Matt. Let's look at the list. And yeah, folks, if you were thinking of last year's Kentucky Derby, Rich Strike, he was, as Matt said, was down on the list at this point in time. And he worked his way in all the way till the the last defection the day before the race got rich strike in and he of course won last year's kentucky derby so enough said bubble list here here we go uh what we did is we put 12 horses currently listed 17 through 28 17 through 28 on the kentucky derby points list of course horses like forte and and practical move and tap it trice angel of empire two fills uh uh the, the 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 top Japanese horses are in, but there's a lot of interesting horses. So let's run them down, Matt. Number 17, probably safe. Now, the one thing you need to realize with this current bubble list is that there is a derby prep on Saturday. It's the Lexington Stakes at Keeneland. And I'm not sure why, but the Lexington doesn't have a lot of derby points. I think it's a better race than a lot of Races that gave out more points previously on the list, Matt. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and I think it's a, it's it's more points than it has been. And I guess under the right circumstances, uh, with the current point structure, there are some horses, depending on whether they're going to enter or not, uh, can move up the list a little bit with the. Uh, uh, with the 20 point spread in the Lexington, certainly if there were more points, uh, I think that we would get a much bigger field, but it is what it is. And, uh, we'll see when they draw the Lexington, I think, uh, later on today, uh, which of these horses actually go in. Yeah, that's right, Matt. The Lexington will be drawn today. We're filming uh, here Wednesday uh, morning, so the Lexington draw will be today for Saturday. I think it's an interesting race. I think there's some new up-and-coming horses, maybe a few horses that uh, uh, could, uh, you know, turn it around. Uh, Victory Formation, for instance, is a horse I haven't given up on. He's pointed to the race. Uh, we'll also talk about one bubble horse you see here who can really do himself well by either winning or or probably just finish se second or third. His name is Disarm. We're going to talk about more uh, him a little bit more. Confidence Game is also using the Lexington as a last major prep. He's farther up this list. Confidence Game is already in, so he doesn't need the points, but he uh, would like a good performance. Certainly, you want to run well in the Lexington if you feel like you got a shot to run in the Kentucky Derby. Charismatic always comes to mind. Uh, with the Lexington because he won the Lexington and then won the Kentucky Derby a couple weeks later, Matt. Number 17, probably on the list, probably safe because it doesn't look like there's going to be that many Lexington horses that can pass him. Blazing Sevens ran a terrible race in his first start of his three-year-old season down in Florida. Forte beat him by a mile. 
Improvement was expected. He got Irad Ortiz in the saddle, and he ran third in the bluegrass, which should get him in, as we could see with 46 points. I don't know if he ran necessarily a, a strong race in the bluegrass, but it was much improved. It, it was much improved, Brian. And, and to, to be honest, I've been hearing some rumblings already that Chad Brown is going to pass on the Derby with Blazing Sevens, which he has done with other horses in the past few years and gone to uh, the Preakness or uh, the Belmont Stakes, but particularly to the Preakness. So it's not official by any means that Blazing Sevens is uh, 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 passing on the Derby, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with that, and, and I kind of half expected it. You've seen, as you said, Matt uh, Brown do it before, uh, most notably with Cloud Computing a few years ago, who didn't run in the Kentucky Derby, and then won the Preakness, of course. Uh, so Blazing Sevens is uh, uh, likely to get in if he wants to get in, but he might not want to get in. Number 18 on the list, formerly trained by Bob Baffert. He's been trained by Tim Yachtin recently. I thought he ran a very good third. He actually won the sham stakes early this year. I thought he ran a very good third, reincarnate that is, in the Rebel in a slot on a sloppy track with trouble. But I was a little disappointed by his performance, to tell you the truth, Matt, in the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, and, and that seems to be the sentiment that uh, a lot of people are expressing about reincarnate. You mentioned that sham stakes, uh, uh, Brian, and won that sham stakes, but boy. The ineligibility for the Derby points is certainly coming back to haunt this horse right now. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I still think that that 18th on this list, which is kind of 19, and I'm going to explain that in a minute, uh, will probably get him in because I think it's likely that only one horse out of the Lexington would pass him. That would make reincarnate 19th on this list. 20, let's explain it now, Matt. Number 20 listed here by the Churchill Downs official uh, media uh, top 20 is, is Kantnur. Kantnur. Kantnur is a Japan qualifier. So he's listed here on, as a bubble horse because that's where he was on their list. But he's in. He's a Japanese qualifier. He's automatically in. So he would really move past Blazing Sevens, reincarnate Jace's Road, and they would become 18, 19, on, and 20. If only one horse moves up from the Lexington, that would mean reincarnate would move down to 20 in actuality. Jace's road would be 21. Reincarnate's a horse with some speed. I think he could affect the Kentucky Derby that way. I was disappointed, though, with the third place finish in the Arkansas Derby. He was no match, certainly, for Angels Empire. So Jace's Road, currently probably the horse really, truly on the bubble. Is he going to get in? Is he not going to get in? Because he would be 20 on this list, and a Lexington horse could knock him out on Saturday. Trained by Brad Cox. He's not my favorite Brad Cox horse, map. He's a son of Quality Road, and I wonder if he wants a mile and a quarter. Uh, he, he's kind of bred for middle distances, and I haven't gotten the feeling from his preps that Jace's Road is going to be a real threat at a mile and a quarter. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know, Brian. You know, he uh, uh, he won on the Derby Trail earlier on in one of those ten point races. Came back in the Southwest Stakes and and had a little bit of a disappointing performance when he was fifth, and then on to the Louisiana Derby where he improved his performance and looked a lot better than he did in the Southwest when he finished third. That race, of course, is a mile and three sixteenths. So we're only talking about another sixteenth of a mile. Uh, um, I thought that Jace's Road uh, uh, returned to his better form in the Louisiana Derby. Yeah, that's fair enough, Matt. I, I'm not going to argue with you there. And and I like this group. This is all about family stable, and they, of course, have Angel of Empire, who's higher on the list, and I consider really a bigger threat for the Kentucky Derby, but. I will go back to that Louisiana Derby. You're right. It's a mile 316, so he's almost there to the mile and a quarter. But on the other hand, you know, he proved he's better on a fast track than a sloppy track. His bad races have been on a sloppy track. His good races have been on fast tracks. But he was third 
uh, not that close. He was third, I, I want to say, by about four lengths or so, four or five lengths in the in Louisiana Derby. And he's the horse that stalked King's Barn, King King's Barnes uh, on that easy lead. It was a slow pace, and and Chase's Road really had no um, no answer. He was the horse sitting a good trip in second, right behind the winner. And uh, Kings Barnes only pulled away from him uh, down the stretch in the Louisiana Derby. So Chase's Road is not a horse I'll be looking to bet in the Kentucky Derby. He's got some speed again. Um, he's a horse who probably will get in, especially what you said last year. A horse I'm really hoping gets in, 21 on this list, could move down after Saturday again in the Lexington, is Skinner. And, and Skinner, you see, has 45 points, much like Reincarnate, Chase's Road cyclone mischief below him but uh, it has to do with uh, a graded stakes earnings and uh skinner is third on that four weight tiebreaker at 45 points so reincarnate chases road ahead of him cyclone mischief behind him skinner hasn't won much yet but uh certainly improving for trainer john sheriff's good santa nina derby matt yeah good santa anita derby um and now that has a pair of third place finishes on the Derby trail with the Santa Anita Derby. And before that, uh, in the San Felipe, I've heard people saying they, that they get a little bit of Giacomo feeling from, uh, Skinner. Uh, Giacomo of course was, uh, John Sheriff's Kentucky Derby winner at a big price back in, I don't know. What was it? 2003. When was it, Brian? I want to say 2004. I should know because that was one of my best Kentucky Derbies ever. And of course, he beat a fleet Alex and he was over 50 to one that day, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. I think I thought it was around 2003, 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Giacomo. Yeah. In fact, Skinner, you could say, even has slightly better form than Giacomo coming in. Giacomo was a horse who I thought would want 10 furlongs. Skinner. A son of Curlin is a horse I think will want 10 furlongs. And I think that Santa Anita Derby, like I said, was his best race yet. He continues to improve for a, uh, a trainer who uh, probably is headed to the Hall of Fame sooner or later, John Sheriff's an interesting horse there that we're looking to uh, get in. Good shot to get in as well, even if he falls to 22 here uh, after the Lexington. Cyclone Mischief is in a little bit more trouble. Again, projecting maybe disarm passes him on Saturday in the Lexington. He could fall to 23 on this list with 45 points, loses a tiebreaker. Getting better. Dale Roman's only shot to get in the Derby this year, but this horse is getting better. Three out of four good races at Gulfstream Park. Holy Bowl was bad, but he's been better since. Yeah, Holy Bowl was bad, certainly, and uh, but has come back and also has a pair of third-place finishes, third in the Fountain of Youth third in the Florida Derby and and yeah certainly looked better than uh, uh, than he did earlier in the year on the Derby trail yeah and I liked what I saw in the Florida Derby a little bit too because he was third best yes but uh, he he showed the ability to come off the pace just a little bit he's got speed uh, son of into mischief good looking horse um, best race yet I thought was that Florida Derby came a little bit off the pace and and hung on pretty well beaten only about four lengths by the kentucky derby favorite forte 23 on the list major dude todd pletcher i don't know he he's been good on turf he ran a decent second last time collecting points uh but two fills just ran right by him in the stretch uh at turfway park yeah absolutely and uh you know, with uh, Todd Pletcher's other horses, the uh, three that he's got up above the, uh, the the Derby points leaders that we have showing, um, Major Dude is ranked number four in my eyes in the in the Pletcher horses. Your eyes and just about everybody else in the world's eyes, Matt. Uh, yeah, those those top three from Pletcher, uh, Forte, Kings Barnes. And of course, Tapa Trice, the winner of the Bluegrass last week, are, uh, are, are a uh, pretty terrific trio for trainer Todd Fletcher this year. Next on the list, this is a horse I bet uh, as a long shot a little bit in the Arkansas Derby. And uh, he he lived up to my hopes a little bit as a big long shot in the Arkansas Derby by 
rallying wide down the stretch to get up for second. His name is King Russell. This is a horse I said wants a distance. He's trained by Ronnie Moquette, a son of creative cause. I saw him break his maiden at Oakland Park when I was down there uh, in the mud. And I just thought this horse wanted a distance. His Arkansas Derby was good, but he'll need some defections if he wants to get into the Kentucky Derby. Yep, he's going to need those defections uh, that we were talking about. And I guess uh, anything's possible at this point. And yeah, go, going from that maiden special weight win to a second place in the Kentucky Derby is certainly noteworthy. Um, uh, pointing out a horse that, you know, could make some noise later on uh, in the summer in all the uh, three year old, big three year old races and derbies all over the country. Matt, I, I, I hate to be the guy that corrects somebody, but you just said King Russell went from the maiden to a second place finish in the Kentucky Derby. Oh, I, sorry. I wonder if you have your Kreskin cap on today because if he gets in, I might throw him in for second underneath in the Kentucky Derby. So from your lips to, to God's ears, we'll see. King Russell, an interesting up-and-comer for Ron Moquette. Now, number 26, Disarm, again, we're waiting for the draw for the Lexington, which is coming a little bit later today. Uh, but as far as we know, Disarm is the one horse who could really help himself. And I think that's why he's running. I, I don't know if he had enough points if he would run in the Lexington. But I think Steve Asman with Sin wants this developing son of Gunrunner to get in. And with 40 points, 20 to the winner, 8 to second, six to third in the Lexington. Likely a third place finish would be enough. I don't know if that'll be enough to convince him that he's Kentucky Derby worthy. Probably the way people get Kentucky Derby fever, but he probably only needs to finish third to qualify. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, he uh, ran one of his best races uh, in the Louisiana Derby when he was second. And, you know, and I will admit uh uh, that that was a boo-boo on my part uh, as somebody who had been uh, talking about the talent that Disarm flashed during the summer at Saratoga. Um, after one of his races, I, I, I kind of uh, let go of him a little bit in the uh, Louisiana Derby. I didn't use him and uh, cost me the trifecta in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, um, I just didn't stick with him, but he sure looked the good. He looked talented once again uh with that race at the fairgrounds yeah disarm has run four good races the problem with this arm is two were early in his two-year-old year including a very nice win at saratoga when you liked him a lot and he beat a horse that i like a lot named arthur's ride he's come back he faced a good horse who was on the lead two eagles river in an allowance race was second best that day and then last time faced a good horse who was out on the lead again this time Kings Barnes and ran and ran a clearly better race going a mile three sixteenths with only four lifetime starts. Disarm is a horse who really looks like he could move up and be one of the best uh, 10 horses uh, in this Kentucky Derby field. All he needs to do is run a pretty good race in the Lexington to qualify. It looks like number 27, Arctic arrogance speed. I don't know if Linda Rice is uh, excited to get him in the Derby. But I just like this horse because he runs every time, even his fourth in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, no great shakes. But again, he ran his race, showed a lot of speed, was game for a while before fading very late in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, absolutely. He has run well. He's got a whole series of, uh, of second place finishes uh, in the Withers, in the Jerome, in the Remsen, um, setting the pace, always there at the end, did the same thing in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, it was a it was a tougher field in the wood than in those other races. And coming down the stretch, uh, he uh, you know dropped out of it, the the stretch battle that ended up happening in the Wood Memorial between three horses. Number twenty eight is a horse I would bet in the Kentucky Derby underneath. He's a horse I think that could rally into the superfecta or the trifecta or possibly even the exacta. It doesn't look like Red Route One's going to get in, but. If there's a bunch of defections, that 28 could move way up in the next uh, three weeks or so before the Kentucky Derby. So Red Route 1, I'm, I'm kind of watching this list. He's well down it now, but if he gets in, long shot. He was uh, just about a length out of second in that Arkansas Derby, even though he finished sixth. 
Hey, Brian, let's make sure we talk about number 24, Mandarin Hero, a little bit. Yeah, I was saving Mandarin Hero for last, Matt, because he, I think, is the most exciting horse on this list. Mandarin Hero. If you like Skinner, it's hard not to like Mandarin Hero, right, after the, Louis, uh, after the Santa Anita Derby. And, you know, these Japanese horses have been running so well on dirt the last couple of years all over the world, including America, and now including America again. Because that Santa Anita Derby performance, I love the way he warmed up. He was sprinting around the backstretch before the Santa Anita Derby. And then this horse that only ran at one track in Japan, and we were just like, we're not sure how the quality is going to compare with what we had in America. Wow, did it, because he ran a huge race coming off the rail, uh, finding room, and then really going after Practical Move. Practical Move was good in the stretch of the Santa Anita Derby. Everybody wants to see Mandarin Hero in the Kentucky Derby, Matt. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know what to think at this point. Uh, yeah, certainly I agree with what you said. Uh, uh, people were talking about his his races in Japan were at a lower level racetrack, um, and and how was he going to hold up in America? And came in and ran a you know ran a really great race and and absolutely put a scare into Practical Move. They were uh, they were dead close at the wire. Um, does that mean that, I don't know, the, the Santa Anita Derby was not a particularly strong race, but they had big speed figures come out of that race. Yeah, and I like Practical Move. I, I do worry now a little bit more after the race than before the race. Is Practical Move a 10 for long horse? We're going to talk a whole lot more about this in the coming weeks on Horse Center, but uh, huge performance by Mandarin Hero. Uh, it makes me wonder how good Derma Sotogaki is, the winner uh, of the UAE Derby. But I like what they did with this horse, and it's a little bit more risky in a way, but they brought him to America pre-Kentucky Derby and took their shot to get points in a race in America before the Kentucky Derby. That should help him, provided he gets in to the Kentucky Derby, where there's horses coming out of the UAE Derby just have failed to, to make big runs in the Kentucky Derby over the years. We shall see. An interesting horse uh, and an interesting list of horses. We hope you enjoyed our look at the bubble horses. We got two races of the week still to talk about, Matt. We're going to go through them pretty quick. And unfortunately, that's all we can do with the Apple Blossom because I, a million dollar grade one race, Matt, and that's all you got. That's all you got, Matt. Four horses. I, I, I'm flabbergasted that only four older females ended up in this race regardless it's a really good uh, uh top heavy race in that you got two of the very best older females in the country secret oath and clarier one on the rail one on the outside there uh in the race it's their third meeting they've beaten each other each has beaten each other once so this is a rubber match and this uh you know a, a, a nest could come back we don't know if good night olive is going to stretch out those are the four best older dirt females in the country, including Secret Oath and Clarier right now. This this could be an Eclipse Award kind of um, a, a, a race you look back at and say this has a bearing on who wins the championship among the older females. Anyway, four horses. Uh, you got a speed horse. And then you got two, two really classy horses. We're going to lay a little bit off the speed horse. And, and then you honestly... You got a horse who's just a fill-in to make it four horses. Yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. As you mentioned earlier, I don't know how uh, they couldn't even get a fifth horse in there. Uh, fifth place in a million-dollar race is going to pick you up a nice little uh, chunk of change. But, you know, that's uh, that's the way it is. Secret Oath in here coming back uh, uh, was really strong, as we remember last year as a three-year-old in the beginning of the campaign around this time of year had all those had really good races on the Kentucky Oaks trail then won uh, uh, the the Kentucky Oaks and 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 as the year went on and continued to race she, she wasn't quite as good but she came back uh, with a really nice performance uh, in the Azari uh, to start off 2023 yeah absolutely is it is an excellent performance it further uh, made me think that she really loves Oaklawn Park because she's run there five times. She's won four uh, pretty impressively. Uh, average margin of victory, three were stakes. Uh, uh, of course, uh, 
the prep for the uh, fantasy last year, the Honey Bee, um, the Martha Washington, and now the Azari. She won the Azari pretty easily. Her only loss at Oakland Park was when she was third in the Arkansas Derby against the boys. Um, really nice, classy, classy mare now four years old, as is Clarier now five years old, another classy mare. She's just missed in the Breeders' Cup Distaff last year, and she was really close to the Breeders' Cup Distaff two years ago as a three-year-old. Both of these, uh, Clarier a little bit over $2 million in earnings. Secret Oath is knocking on the door of $2 million in earnings. Classy, classy horses. Clarier also came back for her first start of the year in the uh, uh, Azari. And um, she had a little traffic. She was a little too far behind. She never threatened, but she did get up for second behind Secret Oath. Yeah, and likely she needed a race um, uh, in, that, in her first start of the year. Uh, had so many big performances, as we you mentioned some of them. We remember that uh, she was one of the only horses to beat Malathot, uh, the champion uh, from the older horse div division um, last year. So she's got a lot of big performances. Um, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Yeah, she did. She beat Malathot twice last year, and she was on the verge of becoming a champion herself if she had uh, gotten that nose down on the wire uh, third, but uh, third by probably a head or so, a couple noses in that Breeders' Cup. Great Breeders' Cup to staff, won by Malathot, the champion, two-time champion last year. Uh, okay, so looking at this race, Matt, Hot and Sultry is a pretty nice up-and-coming a uh, uh, fast filly for trainer Norm Cassie, who's won a ton of races at Oakland Park this year. She's the speed. She's clearly the speed. And, and she wasn't all that far from Clarier last time in the Azari. Uh, then the three is just a much cheaper filly who's won one of eight races at Oakland Park and really will probably run around the track in last every step of the way and collect 60 grand. Can't, can't blame the connections for doing that. So then it becomes, uh, do they let Hot and Sultry get an easy lead and wait and wait and watch each other? Or what does Secret Oath and Clarier do? By the way, I think Secret Oath has a little bit more tactical speed than Clarier, but don't be surprised at all if Clarier is right on top of Secret Oath in second and third early in this race. Yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, that's the tendency when you've got a small field like this and things are... Uh, appearing to be a little bit more match race ish uh, with the small field. Um, you don't want to get too far behind in those kind of circumstances. Yeah, it, it could come down to who gets first jump on Hot and Sultry. And if they completely leave Hot and Sultry alone, she actually has a shot here as a talented, again, up and coming kind of horse for Neil. Uh, Neil, I call them Neil. Norm Cassie. Pardon me, Norm. Okay. Luckily, the other big race uh, uh, that we're looking at this week has a much bigger field. Uh, maybe not superstars as far as Clarier and Secret Oath, but there's at least one superstar in the Maker's Mark Mile on Friday at Keeneland. Grade one, 600,000. Of course, as the name would suggest, the Maker's Mark Mile is a flat mile on the turf. And there he is, Matt, number seven. A champion turf horse as a three-year-old, and Modern Games has come to North America three times before. He's perfect and impressive horse. Yeah, absolutely. From the barn of Charlie Appleby, uh, Godolphin, uh, homebred, uh, winner last year of the Breeders' Cup Mile at Keeneland. So uh, familiar with the grass course, likes the grass course, but I don't really think it matters that much. He also won the Woodbine Mile uh, uh, last year um, and was second in the the Queen Elizabeth II at Ascot last year. Um, super talented horse, as we know, and no nobody, nobody is better shipping from Europe in the last few years than Charlie Appleby. Yeah, Modern Games has not run since winning at Keeneland, the Breeders' Cup Mile. Add the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf uh, uh, from two years ago. Oh, add the French Guineas last year. Uh, just a top-notch turf horse, loves a mile, has proven at Keeneland. The question is, is he going to be sharp after nearly five and a half months away? And he's got a, a, an interesting field. The, the eight horses, Matt, you know, there's some I don't like, but every single horse in the race, Cavo Spirit in love, 
Shea Puri, you know, I, I'm not really considering betting them in here, even speaking scout, but they're nice turf horses and, and that's what you get. You get a, you get a deep field. I guess Pletcher is most interesting to me with two up to the mark in Emmanuel. Emmanuel could show some speed and he's won three out of four starts on turf. He was on the Kentucky Derby trail last year. And he's two for two this year. Yeah. N nice wins. Won uh, a, a big stake at uh, Tampa Bay Downs. Won the Canadian turf at uh, Gulfstream Park. That's a grade three, a sign of more than ready, uh, a, you know, a prolific turf sire. Yeah, up to the mark. The other Pletcher horse I might like even more. It worries me that he doesn't have a ton of speed, but he's just been so impressive in his two races on turf. Those races at Gulfstream Park, two allowance wins were really impressive. I think Pletcher has a really nice turf horse here in up to the mark. Yeah, absolutely. Just they they decided to uh, uh, move up to the mark to the turf after a couple of races on the dirt, and and he sure took to uh, took to the grass with two really nice turf wins in those allowances that you mentioned at uh, Gulfstream Park. He'll be get he'll have to run on a thicker, plusher grass course than the uh, 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 sandy turf course at Gulfstream Park. So we'll see if that uh, is a positive or a negative for that Pletcher runner. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, just impressed me so much, though, in those first two starts on turf this year. Uh, it looks like a very good thing. And, you know, you, you, you always got to fear the European imports for Mr. Chad Brown. He's got one here, Dr. Zemp. He also had a first race. Uh, well, he also is coming off a win at Gulfstream Park, I should say. It was his first race in America. Certainly no modern games over there in Europe. But on the other hand, he was a Group 3 winner in Europe. And his debut in America looked good, winning an allowance at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, absolutely. And and he must have, uh, Chad must have felt that he needed to get a race into uh, Dr. Zem for Chad to run a promising horse like that at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, Dr. Zemp is promising since the switch to American racing. He's done most of his racing at seven furlongs, interestingly. So this will be just a little bit farther than his comfort zone. Seven and a half in that Gulfstream allowance win. Dr. Zemp, another horse who we could be hearing a lot from on turf this year in the American uh, turf scene. And uh, Modern Games clearly doors to beat. In Love is a former grade one winner at Keeneland, although he hasn't won a whole lot since, but he's always a, at least a horse to mention. It's a good field, again, in the Maker's Mark mile. All right, Matt, uh, the two races of the week, let's do some top picks. We did the Apple Blossom. For First, there's not a lot to choose from. Tell us who you like best. Yeah, I'm going to go in the Apple Blossom. I'm going to go with Clarier. I'm going to assume that she needed that race a little bit, and uh, nobody better to have than Clarier coming down the stretch. Clarier is tough. She's one tough mare, Matt. I don't blame you a bit. You'll probably be on the second choice this time in the Apple Blossom. I've got four reasons, though, why Secret Oath beats Clarier. You ready? <laughs> Here, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you you mentioned first time out of the year. Last time she's she debuted very strongly uh, last year, so I'm not sure how much Clarier will move up. But she, you're probably right; she will move up. Reason number two: Secret Oath loves Oakland Park. Secret Oath is four wins and a third in the Arkansas Derby and a five starts at Oakland. This is her course, if you will, horses for courses, and that makes me edge towards Secret Oath. Uh, the third reason is I think Secret Oath has that push button acceleration maybe that Clarier doesn't at a mile and a 16th in a short field you know I think Clarier could pin Secret Oath down on the rail but she can burst away much like Sunday Silence did from Easy Goer years ago where are they oh there they are they're, they're right there uh she has a little bit more acceleration than Clarier and I think that could matter at a mile 16th in a four horse field and finally uh, she's my favorite horse in training. I, I love that D. Wayne Lucas gives her all these big opportunities and she keeps running good races. Remember in the Breeders' Cup distaff last year, Matt, she showed that burst of speed and she opened up a little bit early in the stretch before horses like Clarier went by her late. I think a mile 16th favors her in the Apple Blossom. Maker's Mark Mile, you're on the favorite and I certainly can't blame you. Yeah, I am. Uh, modern Games is just too good. 
in my eye, just too good for uh, for this field. Although, as you said, there are some very nice horses in this field. I don't think Charlie Appleby would be sending modern games over here if he didn't have the horse at his very best coming off of the layoff. Yeah, I need a doctor. I need somebody to check my cranium now because I'm picking against modern games. I don't think I've ever picked my, against modern games in, in his previous three starts. I just figure he's a heavy favorite who hasn't run in nearly half a year. Why not take a little shot to beat him? But I tell you what, everything you may, uh, just said makes a lot of sense. Having said that, I'm very high on up to the mark. I've loved his first two turf races. I'm going to give him a shot here in the Maker's Mark Mile. Remember, that's Friday. The Lexington is Saturday at Keeneland. The Maker's Mark Mile is Friday. So don't miss that big grade one on Friday. All right, Matt, we jammed a lot into the show, the Bubble Horse Show. What do you got to say as your closing remarks, my friend? Well, uh, we bet at the Bubble Horse Show for the Kentucky Derby. We're going to have plenty more over the next few weeks heading into the Kentucky Derby here on Horse Center. So, of course, we'll see you uh, next week. And thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, big numbers of viewers uh, last week for that big, those big derby trail races. Darn tootin'. We're going to talk a lot about the Kentucky Derby in the next few weeks, Matt. Darn tootin'. That's a phrase I haven't said in a long, long time. Anyway, thank you. As Matt said, we appreciate you watching. Subscribe. Uh, 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 hit, hit the like button. Uh, leave a comment. All those things help out the algorithm here for Horse Center. And we want to see all of you and all the new faces watching Horse Center in the next few weeks leading up to the Kentucky Derby. Also, thanks to Timeform US for those pace projections we used completely today in the short field of the Apple Blossom and the Maker's Mark Mile. Thanks to our sponsor, the best contest set out there, Derby Wars. Folks, next week, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby. Watch it here right now, right now on next week, same time, uh, same place next week on Horse Center.